Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we approach your throne with thanksgiving and with praise. Thanksgiving because you keep blessing us over and over again. Some men only count blessings in the material realm. But we know that the blessings of God is so much bigger than that. It may include that, but it's so much bigger than that. We are so grateful and thankful to you for every little thing. We're thankful to you, Lord. Thank you for our health and our strength. Thank you that we have eyes to see and ears to hear because some people don't have it. Thank you, Lord, that we can rise up out of our beds and we can put one foot in front of the other and we can walk. Thank you, Lord, that we have a little something to eat this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we have a job that renders us a salary and pay. We give you praise for that right now. Thank you, Lord, for our for our loved ones, our family, Lord, our friends. Thank you, Lord, for the for the times that we can receive, I love you, <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for you being loved, and we receive the love that you have for us. We believe that love that you have for us. Oh, God, thank you for what you did for us yesterday, what you did for us last week, and thank you, Lord, for what, what you're doing for us today and what you're gonna do for us this upcoming week. We will live in thanksgiving. This is the will of God that we are, that we give thanks and that we are thankful, hallelujah. Help us, Lord, not to be complainers and murmurers, but to be thankful, Lord. Help, help us, Lord, not to get so caught up into this world system, not to get caught up in all of the isms of this life, not to get caught up in the division, not to get caught up in any of that, but let us find a place every day of our lives where we can hear your voice and that voice brings us peace that passes all understanding. And oh God, I ask that you give us ease today right now. That Lord, we cast all of our care upon you. We cast all of our burdens upon you right now. For Lord, you're the caretaker this morning. Hallelujah. And we give you praise, Lord. Father, we pray for these United States of America. And we pray for every, every head of state. We pray for our president. We pray for this up, these upcoming elections. And Satan, I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. I say let God arise and the enemies be scattered. I say let faith arise and the enemies be scattered. I say let joy arise and the enemies be scattered. And I speak peace, peace over this church. Peace, peace over their families. Peace, peace over everything that concerned them, that you are perfecting everything that concerned them. And oh God, we let that joy just step up in us right now, Lord. We let it just rise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome you today, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that we were able to bring you with us. Hallelujah, because you live in us, Lord. And and you walk in us and you lead us and guide us and and we're not walking in this mystery lord you're you're by the holy spirit letting us know everything we need to know now bless our time here today as we've come to be edified bless us and let our ears hear and understand and our hearts perceive it and we give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise for it now in jesus name we pray and everybody said amen Welcome to church. Welcome to church, somebody. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. I want to encourage you today about the fact that we have a belonging that God has made available to each and every one of us. You know, this entire world has experienced such division and uh, ostracism and rejection, fear, all kinds of things, particularly as a result of this uh, pandemic that we're coming out of. And so, you know, be encouraged in knowing the scripture that says here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 
21 in the message translation. It says, that's plain enough, isn't it? You're no longer wandering exiles. He says, this kingdom of faith is now your home country. You're no longer strangers or outsiders. I like what he says here. He says, you belong here. He says, you belong here with as much right to the name of Christian as anyone. God is building a home. He's using us all, irrespective of how we got here. And what he is building, he used the apostles and the prophets for the foundation. And so I want you to be encouraged this week in knowing that you belong. You belong to the family of God. You belong to God's plan, to his purpose. You know, sometimes the enemy wants us to feel unsafe, insecure, having a sense that we don't fit because of maybe what we've experienced. Sometimes trauma as a child can cause you to feel a sense of not belonging. But I want you to be encouraged in knowing what the scripture says, that you belong. God wants you to understand that and get a hold of the connection that he has and the love that he has for you each and every day. And so, Father, we just thank you that we belong to the family of God. We belong to the body of Christ. We belong to you, and we thank you that we're no longer outsiders, strangers to the covenant of God, those who are rejected and outcasts. Lord, we just thank you for the sense that you cause to rise up on the inside of us, that belongingness, in Jesus' name. We receive that today. God. That rest of that scripture says, now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. We're being held together by Jesus. We're being held together by Jesus. Jesus is our gorilla glue. Amen. And every time you think you're not going to be able to hold it together, I want you to know who Jesus is holding you together. If you ever wonder or have a question why you didn't lose it when that happened or how come you didn't go crazy when that other thing happened, it's because Jesus was holding you together, praise God. Hallelujah. When somebody you love went home and be with the Lord, when some crazy thing happened, when some, some, some ridiculous thing hurt you so bad, and you surprised yourself, you thought you were going to go crazy. But Jesus is the one that holds you together. Hallelujah. Because, hallelujah, this house was put together with precision. Every brick has a call on it. Every brick has an anointing on it. Every brick's got a purpose on it. Hallelujah. And Jesus is the chief cornerstone. And I don't care what anybody tells you about Jesus, we can't do anything without him. Hallelujah. So this morning, I want to celebrate Jesus today. I want to celebrate the name of Jesus. You know, they dog him out. They talk about him. They tell him, they, they tell us all kinds of stuff about him. That, you know, Jesus is a fake and Jesus is a phony. And y'all not believe in Jesus. And they, 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 all kinds of stuff. But I'm telling you right now, if it were not for Jesus, you and I would not have a right to this tree of life. If it were not for Jesus, we would not be the righteousness of God. If it were not for Jesus, we would not be redeemed. If it were not for Jesus, we would have the wisdom of God. If it were not for Jesus, I don't even want to think about where we would be. So rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Jesus is alive today. Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus, man. It's all about Jesus, man. And I'm just thanking and I'm praising God. I'm so glad to see you this morning. If you are a first-time visitor visiting here with us, would you wave at me and I'm going to wave back at you and tell you welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad to have you here today. Thank God you're not fair-weather Christians. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to have a great time today. We're going to continue to talk about maturity through suffering. We got to mature, amen? And I thank God that we are. Praise God you may be seated. 